time lapse. Is that that new Apple Watch that you wrap around both your thighs? Hey guys, how y'all doing out there? It's me, your boy, Malik, back on your screen one more time for PinnaclestudioPro.com. I had a few questions about setting up a time lapse on Pinnacle Studio, so I wanted to show you guys how to knock that out and get it done. Let's jump off into the software and make it happen. Before we get started in Pinnacle Studio, let me give you a little bit of Time Lapse 101. The first thing you need to do is frame your shot and plug in all of your camera settings. Next, you need to determine how long you want your time lapse to be. If you want 12 seconds of cloud footage and you're shooting at 30 frames per second, you'll need 360 photos or frames to be captured. 12 seconds times 30 frames each second equals 360 photos. Once you got all that figured out, you got your calculator out and all that stuff done, you'll need to select the interval between each photo. The less time between each photo, the smoother the time lapse will appear. Using an earlier example, the lowest amount of time you can use would be like six minutes, but that won't be enough time to clear the image buffer before your next photo is taken. So don't do that. Don't you ever do that, okay? Don't do it. If you have an intervalometer, now that you got all of your things thought out and you're ready to go, you can program it to shoot 360 frames at the number of intervals or uh, number of seconds that you choose, or you can set it to infinite frames and you can just watch the time and then stop the intervalometer when you're done. Now that we got all of that mumbo jumbo out the way, let's bring the photos into Pinnacle Studio and create a time lapse. So I'm going to show you how to do this using the new project bins in Pinnacle Studio 19 Ultimate. Keep in mind, if you don't have Pinnacle Studio 19 Ultimate, you can just right click, do quick import and select the location where you want to grab all the photos from, whether they're on your um, SD card or on a specific drive on your computer, you can browse it, select it and bring all the photos in. So let me show you how to do it with, the project bins. So I'm going to go over to navigation. I'm going to go up to the project bins area. I want to click on the create new project bin icon. So I do this, I'm going to name my project bin. and click on OK. Now that I have this new project bin, I can drag and drop the files here. I can right click and do a quick import. I could do all kinds of things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on the quick import button here and bring everything into this project bin. And here are the photos on my card. So I'm going to left click on the first photo. I'm going to go all the way down to the last photo by scrolling down to it. I'm going to hold down my shift button on my keyboard and I'm going to click on the last photo. And now I'm going to click on open. And here come the photos. Here come the fault house, baby. Here come the fault house. Here come the fault house, baby. Here come the fault house. Here come the fault house, baby. All right, I'm going to have to go ahead and do some uh, serious time lapse myself to get past this point. See you in a few. All right, so all the photos are now in the project bin. That took a minute but they're all there and they're safe and sound protected by the love that is pinnacle studio 
Now, if you did a quick import, then all of these files will be selected right now. But if you did a project bin like I did, then what you're going to need to do is once again, scroll down to the last photo because your first photo should already be selected. So drag this down to the last photo, hold down your shift key and click on the last photo. Now click, you can click any one of these with your left mouse click, hold down your mouse and then drag all of the photos down into the timeline. Now all the photos are still selected, but the default for your photos is going to make these photos a certain amount of seconds long. My default is set on three seconds. So any photo that I bring in the Pinnacle Studio is set to three seconds, but I need each frame or each photo to only be one frame long, right? So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to right click, doesn't matter which one I click on, go to adjust duration and change these to one frame by changing it from three seconds to zero, 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 one. Now each photo is just one frame long. So I'm going to click on okay. And you see that now I have about 12 seconds worth of video is what it will create. It's 12 seconds worth of photos right now, but it will create 12 seconds worth of video. So I'm going to let this complete its rendering because it's going to take a minute to render all of these photos. Because remember, there's 292 photos. So that's to render each one. So I'm going to give it some time to render and I'll be right back. Now, the one thing I don't like is that it has these black bars on the side. So if you want to get rid of the black bars, then you can do what I'm about to do now. First thing I want to do is I need to go ahead and make the timeline bigger so that I can actually see each frame so I can see each photo. So I'm going to drag this back this way so that I can see each frame. And that's good. Now I'm going to click on the timeline somewhere where it's gray so I can deselect all of these photos. I'm going to select one of the photos by left clicking on it. Then I'm going to right click that photo and go to open effects editor. Now I'm going to go to 2D, 3D. I'm going to go to 2D Editor Advanced. I want to change this from default to no preset. And then I'm going to select Size. And I want to change the size so that I'm not stretching out the photo. I don't want to do anything to make one part of the photo, uh, like just changing the horizontal without changing the vertical. So I'm going to click on this little lock so that whatever I change will change both of them. Make sure the lock is orange. So I'm just going to click on horizontal and I'm going to type in a parameter. You could go ahead and just use a slider if you need to. And now if you want to, you can change the position. If you want to bring the photo down or left or right so that you have a certain area in the photograph because the sky is up here, I want to make sure that I get all of the sky in it. I mean, having all of this fence at the bottom is not that important to the shot. The sky is more important to the shot. So I'm going to move this down some. So I'm going to click on vertical. And I'm going to change it to a negative number. Now I can see some black on the top now, so I'm going to move this back some. All right, so that's good. I like it there. I'm going to click on OK. 
and that changed the first photo, but now I would need to change all the other photos to make it exactly like the first one. So I'm gonna place my cursor over this pink line that's at the top of this photo until I see the letters FX. Now I'm gonna right click, go to effect, and then I'm going to go to copy all. And now I'm going to left click in a gray area and hold my mouse down. And I'm going to create the lasso or a box. And I'm going to keep holding my left mouse down until I get all the way to the last photograph. And now that I have lassoed all of these, I'm gonna let go of my left mouse. And now they're all selected. So I can right click on any one of these photos now and select paste and it'll paste the effect. Now they all have the pink line on top. So the effect is now pasted into all of them and now they all fill the screen for me. So I'm gonna drag this back out to where it was. Now to make it into a video, all you need to do is click on export. Choose the video file format that you want. I'm gonna do MPEG-4 and I'm gonna do 1080p. Select the location where you want to Save the video. Click on OK. And then click on Start Export. Give the file a name. and click on save. And in no time, you have a video just like this. All right, guys, you know the routine, the thumb, the one that's pointed in the upward direction. Click it, like it, live it, love it, hug it. Show the thumb some love. Comments. Look, I always get back with you. So leave me your comments if you need help. I will point you in the right direction to get you that help you need, or I'll go ahead and give you the answer on the spot. And last, but definitely not least, if you want some more of this chunky, funky, pinnacle studio goodness on a regular basis, then you gotta do what? You gotta subscribe, baby. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna see a video every time I upload one for Pinnacle Studio. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.